hello you're welcome to another tutorial and i said this tutorial is going to be in two parts but looking at how the tutorial is going um, i'm planning of extending it to three parts so in this tutorial we are going to continue with what we we're doing the last time and we'll also look at special matlab functions so to continue this we'll solve the question we left off with from the last tutorial which is suppose a is given by the matrix here what would matrix B look like if B and then is given by A then colon comma one two so if you're able to figure it out that's great if you're not able to do that too let's see how we can solve this so in the last tutorial we talked about the fact that when we call A and then we use the colon it returns the whole matrix so the colon is being used in place of the row so this means that we are looking for the number of rows or how many rows there exist inside the matrix so looking at this looking at our matrix a we have um, three rows and then four columns so this is going to return a vector so the colon put in place of the row is going to return a vector like this one is to three and we know that one is to three is the same as one two three okay so one is to three because we have three rows and then we have one is to two and one is to two is the same as one and two okay so putting this into our function then we can be able to find the answer so i'm going to display a then let's see what we get so you are going to get b to be equal to a and then we can now substitute the colon with one two and three and then we can substitute the second part or the column part with one and two okay so from this we can easily find our answer so let's try and then find the answer before we press enter we have go to the first row get me the first and second so the first row we are going to get nine and four and then go to the second row get me the first and second so two and eight then go to the third row get in the first and second so in all we are going to get this matrix we are going to get nine four two eight and then six seven as our answer so let's press enter and see what you get exactly so this is how to solve a question of this form so this is our next question and in this question we have been given three vectors that's a b and c and then let's first write our vectors down then we are now asked to um, perform operations on these vectors so per our first question we have a dot star b so we have a dot star b what does this mean if we had something like a star b that would have been a, a vector multiplication but when you have a dot star that means that you are multiplying the indexes so in our case you are multiplying the indexes of what a and b so when we try to take a look at this you can see you are going to multiply two one by two which is going to give us two and, th and then we multiply two by 2.5 then we multiply two by two again and then four by four one times two is two and then two times 2.5 is five and then 2 times 5, 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 4 is 16. So this is the first one. And now our second question is, is saying we should find A star B. So what do you think the answer to this question will be? So the answer to A star B is going to be a dimension error because their dimensions won't agree. So to be able to multiply vectors of this form, you see that we transpose one of them and then we'll have a row vector and a column vector but we cannot multiply two row vectors so when we press enter we get matrix dimension what error and our third question is asking us to sum a and b so this is the same as the normal vector summation we do all the time so we are just going to sum the a and then the b so 
we are going to have 1 plus 2, which will give us 3. And then in the second place, we'll have 2 times 2 plus 2.5, and another 2 plus 2, and then 4 plus 4. So this, this is what we are supposed to get. So let's try it out. We have A plus what B. And then we get this. So it's 3, 4.5, 4, and then 8. I want you to try the the last the last one from here we have a dot star b plus c so i want you to pause the video and then try it on your own all right so if you're able to find the answer congrats if you're not able to do it let's do it together so what this means is that we have we are multiplying the individual element from a and then b and after that whatever we get we add what c to it in the first entries of the a and b we are going to have 1 times 2, which is 2, and then plus 1 from the C, which is going to be 3. So yes, we are going to do this over and over to get the answer. So let's compute this from the MATLAB command window and see the answer. So we have A dot star B plus C. And as exactly as expected, we have 3, 6, 6, and 18. So in the second place from the column, we have... 2 multiplying 2.5 which is 5 plus the 1 from the C and that's going to give us 6 and in the third element we have 2 multiplying 2 which is 4 and plus 2 from C which is going to be 6 and then in the last element we have 4 times 4 which is 16 plus 2 which is what 18 so this is how to solve a question of this nature let's move to our next question okay so this is what we have for our next question we have a dot instead of star we have the slash so this means individual what division between what a and b so i'm going to leave that one out to you to try it on your own and then solve that one so we have the the next question is question 50 we have prod of a so the prod of a is a prod is a function so we have prod and then a so we press enter we get 16 what does this mean so when we display a we can see a is 1 2 2 and 4 so how do we get a 16 so the prod function is the same as summation what ai okay so it will take one multiply it by two and then you get to two multiply by two which is going to be four and then four by the next four which is going to be 16 next question we have a with a vector which is four four and one so in in our case we have only a one dimension okay so a is only in one dimension so what this means is that go to the first row get me the fourth element and then go to the first row get me the fourth element and go to the first row get me the first element so the answer to this question as we expected should be 441 okay as it is here so we have a and then we use a vector four four one we should get four four one as expected okay so our next question is pow pow two so what a power two function does is that it takes any number you put inside and then raise raise two to the power that number you give to it okay so for example if you have power two power two of two what this means is that we are going to take the two and then raise it to the power of 2 when we put 3 inside that's power 2 3 we are going to have 2 to the power of 3 and that should give us 8 so when we put um, power 2 of maybe 6 that should give us 64 so 2 to the power 6 is what 64 so that's what the power two function does so with our question we are putting the whole of what c into power two function and let's see our c our c is given by one one two two okay so we are going to have two to the power one two to the power one two to the power two and two to the power two so let's see what we have so power two of c we get two to the power one which is two and 2 to the power 1 again which is also 2 2 to the power 2 which is 4 and 2 to the power 2 which is also 4 
So let's move on to our next question. We have A greater than B. So this is no different from the question we solved the, the previous time or in our last tutorial. So I'll leave you to this one to try and then find the answer on your own. Now let's look at the next question. We have A and C. So whenever you have um, A and then you operate it with the end, except that there is a zero in one of the vectors, it will always return one okay as the answer so let's see what i'm talking about we have a and what and c and we have one 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 why so let's see what we have as a so this a and what we have as c okay so there is no zero element in a and c so because of this it will always return one 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 so to prove this let's create a vector x and then make it equal to 2 1 0 3 so what's going to happen is that we are going to have everything to be one except the third um, index so let's do a and x a and what x and then let's see our answer so you see we have 1 1 0 1 okay so the end is going to return one except when you have a zero what index Okay, so let's move on to our next question. We have A exactly equal to B. So we have A and then B. So what this operator is going to do is that it's going to compare index-wise the two vectors. So it's going to say it's 1 equal to 2. That's not true. So we are going to get 0, So which is false. And then we have is 2 equal to 2.5. That's also false. It's 2 equal to 2. That's also true. So we are going to get 0, 0. And then it's 4 equal to 4. That's also true. So we are going to get 0, 0, 1, 1. So that's going to, that should be our answer. Let's test it out and see what you get. So we have A exactly equal to what B. So you have 0, 0, 1, 1 as expected. So in these questions, we are going to consider MATLAB functions. So first of all, we have zeros. What the zeros function does is that it's going to, it's going to give you a matrix which is filled with what zeros so the best way to do this to test it out we have zeros and then it can take in the arguments such as three this is going to return a three by three matrix um, filled with zeros so as we have here we could equally give it an argument like zeros and then pass in let's say five by two so this will return a five by two matrix filled with what zeros okay so we can have we have another function called the ones and what the ones does is as you guess it it's going to give us a matrix filled with one so we could equally say um, six and this is going to give us a six by six matrix filled with ones okay and then we could give it a parameter like ones and then have two comma three so this is a two by three um, matrix filled with ones and we have i so e y e so what the i function is, does is that it gives us identity matrix so i could if i want the 5 by 5 identity matrix i could enter 5 here and i have the 5 by 5 identity matrix we could equally do i and then put 3 by 2 so moving on to our next next question we have the seal what the seal function does is that it rounds any number you put inside if and only if it has even 0 0.0 decimal attached to it to the highest integer so let's see this we have the seal and then let's intentionally put 3.0005 or 4 we are going to have the answer to be 4 so seal is going to round this number up to the next or highest what integer so we press this we get four so that's what the seal does okay we also have the floor so the floor is the opposite of the seal so we have um, floor if you have even if you put 3.9 you are going to get three as the answer it's going to run it down to the smallest integer or the least integer it can get to so we get three as our answer 
we also have round so the round function is just like what we do most of the time so if it is equal to five if the decimal point is equal to five or above we round it upwards and then when it is below downwards so if you put 3.3 .3 here we all know that the answer should be what three because it's rounded downwards but we put 3.5 we should get the answer to be four so we round that one up okay so that's what the, the round function does another function is the size so we have so many vectors here we have a b and c so let's try to find the size of a so what the size function brings out is that let's first see what our a is so what the size function does is that it returns a vector of what the dimension of a given vector okay so the dimension of this vector is what one by four so because of that we have our size to be equal to what one by four so that's what the size function does and we have the length function so the length the length function will just return how many elements there are inside a vector or a matrix so let's say the length of what a and we get four so let's see what a is we have one two three four elements inside a so that's what the length function also does so what num to str does is that or num to string does is that it converts any integer into what a string as you guessed so for example if i want to convert let's say z equals five into we all know that z is equal to five and five is a number to be able to convert z to become a string we are going to use what the num to string function so i'll call num to str so num to string of z so this will change z to become what a string okay so the answer we are seeing here is not an, a number it's going to be what a string so that's what the num to string function does we have str cut so the str cut is used to join two strings together okay so if i want to join let's say hey now i can join the two together using the function str cut so i can have str cut and then i can have hey hey and then comma the next argument is what you want to combine it with so we have now so i want to have hey now i can go on and add more to this for example i can add uh one two three so when i hit enter you get these three strings together as one word so we have hey now one two three so that's what the str cut so the str cmp is a very useful function so it is used to compare two strings or characters if they are the same okay so if whilst i can compare something like three is exactly equal to five and then get this answer we cannot compare man is exactly equal to man to get whether this is true or false so to be able to do some some comparison of this form we are supposed to use the str cmp function so you have str cmp of so i'm going to enter man and man so we are going to test if this is true so this should return false because even though they are man is going to see them as two different um, words so it should return what false so false means what zero and then the last function here is the power so what a power function does is that you are supposed to pass it two arguments so for example if i want two power five i can say two comma five and then this function is going to raise it to the power two and five two to the power five and then bring you the answer so that's what the power function does so we press enter we get 32 that's two power five if you enjoy this video please consider subscribing and then liking the videos also don't forget to share with your friends i'll see you in the next tutorial